If you're familiar with that iceberg meme where it goes deeper and deeper the more there is to learn about something, chords and their relationships with one another would absolutely get their own separate iceberg. If learning about chords has ever felt really daunting or intimidating, don't worry. Today, we're just going to scratch the surface of the iceberg, but the good news is that is more than enough to get you started. I'm gonna walk you through a basic understanding of what chords are, how they work, and how you can implement them in your own songwriting without having to dive to the very bottom of the iceberg. Let's do this. Welcome back to Three Strings Music, where we celebrate growth together, both in music and in life. My name is Clayton Roberts, though most people just call me Dewey. Glad to have you here. This is a huge subject that I guarantee you, like 99.999999% of musicians use all the time when working with music. There is a lot to talk about today, and if anything, that's all the more reason why I want to help you out a little bit further with a free gift. I have this guide that I put together called the 30 Minute Music Basics. It's just a PDF that has everything we're gonna talk about today, as well as some other things. It's pretty much a great level one way to get yourself started with understanding how music works, and all the information in there, you can learn it and run with it in 30 minutes or less. And it's completely free as my gift to you. All you have to do is just go to threestringsmusic.com slash basics to download it. Again, that's the number three, stringsmusic.com slash basics. We're gonna start off with just the basics of the concept of harmony in general. Simply put, harmony is the playing of notes together, often as chords. People usually associate harmonies with singing, but non-vocal instruments are also used to harmonize all the time. To give you four quick examples, you have guitar, piano, violin, and trumpet. So that's harmony explained in a very broad sense. So to get a little more specific, what is a chord? A chord is a group of specific notes played together. The two most common types of chords, probably won't surprise you, are major and minor chords. Much like when we talked about scales, examples of this can be things like C major, B minor, E major, C sharp minor, A flat major, and B flat minor. So now that we have an idea of what chords are, let's talk about how to make them. Major and minor chords are super easy to figure out. All you have to do is take the first, third, and fifth degrees of the scale and play those three notes together. These three note chords are called triad chords, tri meaning three. You can use the odd phrase one, three, five to remember what notes of a scale make a chord together. Let's take a look at some examples of how we can use the major scales of notes to find out what their major chord is. Let's start with a scale and a chord we're going to be using a lot today, C major. When we see each note side by side with its corresponding scale degree, it becomes a lot easier to see where the first, third, and fifth of that major chord will be. In this case, to make C major, we're looking at C, the first degree, E, the third degree, and G, the fifth degree. And that's it. Right now, those are the only three notes in the scale that we're particularly interested in. Let's try this out with a second example. This time, we're gonna use the major scale, E major. Once again, if we just look at the first, third, and fifth degree, we will see that in order to make an E major triad chord, we just need E, the first degree, G sharp, the third degree, and B, the fifth degree. And the good news is you can do this exact same thing if you're trying to find out minor chords. All you have to do is just write out the minor scale of the note you're trying to find its minor chord for. Since we used C and E major earlier, let's do the same thing with C and E minor. Starting off with C minor. Once again, looking at the first, third, and fifth degree of the scale will tell us everything we need to know. In this particular case, we're looking at C for the first degree, E flat for the third degree, and G for the fifth degree. 
And there's your C minor chord. One more example for this, this is E minor. If we just focus on the first, third, and fifth degree of this E minor scale, we'll see that in order to make an E minor chord, we need E for the first degree, G for the third degree, and B for the fifth degree. And that's it. To expand on this a little bit further, let's pull up the piano and see how it looks on there. So once again, for the C major chord, we just play the three that we're interested in, the first, third, and fifth degrees of the scale, C, E, and G. Playing E major on the piano would be no different. All we do is just take the first, third, and fifth degree of this scale and apply it here. In this case, E, G sharp, and B. And you would do the same thing for the minor scales. In this case with C minor, C, E flat, and G. And with the E minor scale, E, G, and B, your first, third, and fifth degrees of that scale. And that's it. As long as you know how to make a major or minor scale using the formulas that we talked about in the other video, all you need to do is just 135 your way through any major or minor scale and you get that chord. Now that we know how to find major and minor chords, let's talk a little bit more about their usage. Chords of all sorts are often played throughout a piece of music and can follow certain patterns and combinations. These patterns and combos are referred to as progressions. A progression is a specific sequence of chords played one after the other, usually repeated throughout certain parts of a song like the verse, chorus, bridge, and so on. When talking about these progressions, there is a very common and helpful system that illustrates chord progressions using Roman numerals to represent the type of chords being played during a piece of music. Let's take a look at this little system. Regardless of if we are playing in a major or minor key, chords are represented as uppercase and lowercase Roman numerals. For uppercase Roman numerals, that means it's a major chord. For lowercase Roman numerals, that means it's a minor chord. If we look at how this looks for major scales, we have uppercase, lowercase, lowercase, uppercase, uppercase, lowercase, and lowercase with a degree sign. Don't worry, we'll talk about what that degree sign means later. For minor scales, the order is a little different. Here we have lowercase, lowercase with that degree sign, uppercase, lowercase, lowercase, uppercase, uppercase. Do you see how when finding this stuff out, it's like how we try to find the differences between major and minor scales. They're the same idea of how you get them, just with the order changed around a little bit. It's the same thing here. Let's fill in the blanks with the example scales that we had earlier. If we were to apply this using C major, it would go C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, and B degree sign. Now I'm sure it sounds kind of dumb calling it B degree sign, but don't worry, I promise you that is not the actual name of this chord. We'll go over what exactly this is later, but for now, don't worry about it. Working through this with the C minor scale, it goes C minor, D degree sign, E flat major, F minor, G minor, A flat major, and B flat major. To show one more example of this, let's do the major and minor for E. Starting with E major, it would go E major, F sharp minor, G sharp minor, A major, B major, C sharp minor, and D sharp degree sign. For E minor, it would go E minor, F sharp degree sign, G major, A minor, B minor, C major, and D major. 
So now that we know what progressions and this Roman numeral system are, let's take a look at the stuff in action. I've made this table using C major and E major as our examples. I literally went to Google and just typed in popular major chord progressions, and these were some of the results I got. So I'll share them with you and then show what they would look like in C major as well as E major. One of the first progressions that I saw is one that I myself have used several times before. It's one, four, five. For C major, it's C major as your one, F major as your four, and G major as your five. Bringing this one, four, five progression over to E major, it goes E major as your one, A major as your four, and B major as your five. The next progression I saw on the list is so popular and so recognizable, I immediately knew which one it was. In fact, I may end up doing a future video solely about this. One, five, six, four. I don't actually know any of the numbers or the statistics, but I'm willing to bet that this is probably one of the most popular progressions in all of Western music. I can almost guarantee that you have heard numerous songs that use this. When using this progression in C major, it goes C major as your one, G major as your five, A minor as your six because it's a lowercase Roman numeral, and last and most certainly not least, F major as your four. Using this progression in E major goes E major as your one, B major as your five, C sharp minor as your six, because again, lowercase Roman numeral, so it's a minor, and last and most certainly not least, A major as your four. Another one I saw on this list is probably not as commonly used as the first two, but I personally quite like this one. Two, five, one. I like this one because it shows that you don't have to start your progression on the first degree. You can still have it sound really, really nice doing something else. Using this progression in C major sounds like D minor as your second degree, because again, lowercase Roman numeral, so minor chord. Then it has G major as your fifth degree, and then C major as your one. It actually ends with the one. When using this progression in E major, it goes F sharp minor as your two, B major as your five, and E major as your one. That is just a few of the numerous major progressions that you can use, and don't forget, you can also just come up with your own as well. Curiosity continued to get the better of me, and so I also made sure to Google the most popular minor chord progressions. To pick these apart, we will obviously use C minor and E minor. Jumping right into this first progression, it goes one, six, three, seven. Right away, it's already a little different from the major progressions we saw earlier. In C minor, this looks like C minor as your minor one, A flat major as your sixth, which again, because this one is an uppercase Roman numeral, it's a major chord now. E flat major as your third, and lastly, B flat major as your seven. If you feel like you're not quite ready to be dealing with so many flats, no problem. You can try out E minor with this. Over on the E minor side of things, this progression looks like E minor as your one, C major as your six, G major as your three, and D as your seven. The next minor chord progression I found is actually pretty interesting because, believe it or not, it is the complete opposite of something that we've already worked with. One, four, five, but this time they're all minor chords instead of all major chords. Using this in C minor is quite simple. You've got C minor as your one, F minor as your four, and G minor as your five. Like I said, it's quite the flip from what we did earlier. Bringing this progression over to E minor will do the exact same thing. For E minor, it's E minor as your one, 
A minor as your 4, and B minor as your 5. I've always found this particular progression really interesting because, like we see, it works nicely with all major chords or all minor chords. The last progression we're going to take a look at is pretty similar to one that we did earlier, but one small change makes quite the difference in the tone of the progression. This one is 1, 6, 3, 4 instead of 1, 6, 3, 7. On C minor, the chords are C minor as your 1, A flat major as your 6, E flat major as your 3, and F minor as your 4. Last one, on E minor, we've got E minor as your one, C major as your six, G major as your three, and A minor as your four. I hope this is making sense and getting you excited to try some of these out for yourself, but one thing I want to make very clear to you is that none of these are progressions that you must use. Like I said earlier, they are just tried and true suggestions that have worked well for numerous songs over the years. There are plenty of other chord progressions that you can explore and experiment with. On top of that, feel free to play around and see if you can come up with your own progressions that you end up using in your songs. Remember, if it sounds good, then it is good. Now I did promise you that we would eventually get to that degree sign chord that we saw earlier. Well, I think now is a pretty good time to touch on that. The truth is, there are more than just major and minor chords that you can use when songwriting. The chords you saw earlier with degree signs are a third type of chord that we will briefly take a look at today. They are known as diminished chords. A diminished chord is a minor chord with a fifth degree that is flattened by one half step. When written on a song's chord sheet, diminished chords are often labeled with either a degree sign or a dim next to the chord name like this and this. A diminished chord is created when you take any major chord and flatten both the third and fifth degrees by a half step each. Flattening the third degree is what turns that major chord into a minor chord, and flattening the fifth degree afterwards is what turns that now minor chord into a diminished chord. Let's see what this looks like on the piano. If we make a B major chord, these are the three notes we get. B, D sharp and F sharp. Next, if we were to take that D sharp and flatten it a half step to a D, we would now get B minor, which has B, D, and F sharp. Lastly, if we were to take that F sharp and flatten it a half step down to an F, we would now get B diminished, which has B, D, and F. I'm not going to go over diminished chords in detail today because I'm going to save that for future videos. However, just to tell you a little bit more about them, diminished chords aren't always used, but when they are, they can serve to create a sense of tension and release and act as a transition between two major and or minor chords. They may sound pretty weird and dissonant by themselves, but when used in the context of certain music, they can sound really, really good. And as an important note to keep in mind, there is more than one way to play the same chord. Depending on your desired result, there are other ways that you can use different versions of the same chord to add color and movement throughout a song. These are known as chord voicings. Chord voicing is the arrangement of notes within a chord. This is how chords can sound slightly different and possess different characteristics, but still technically be the same chord. As long as your chord possesses at least one note from all three degrees needed to make that chord, at least in major and minor chords case, the first, the third, and the fifth, with no additional notes, it is still a version of that chord. Going back to our little piano for this, if we play a basic C major triad, we get a very clear picture of the first, third, and fifth degrees of the chord, in this case, C, E, and G. But if we wanted to play this chord with a bit more bass to it, we could add a C note from a lower octave.
What if we wanted those third and fifth degrees to be played in the lower octave as well? Could we do that and it still technically be a C major chord? Absolutely. To keep going with this, could we add those third and fifth degrees in the higher octave again along with everything else? Would it still technically be a C major chord? Yep, it sure would be. <laughs> We've been playing around with voicing so much that by this point, you may have noticed something that's actually pretty cool. The chord we made is just the triad in two different octaves. We just had a C major triad and then made it again. Now, I am having fun with this, but I'm going to go ahead and stop before I make five more. Overall, regardless of the instrument, you can come up with all sorts of colorful and different chord voicings. When talking about major, minor, diminished, and even some other chords, as long as you have at least one of each degree from the original triad and no additional notes, you are still playing a version of that chord. Now, we've talked about a lot of stuff today, but before we wrap up, there is one more question I want to address. Especially while we have been talking about voicings, you may have asked yourself, if you rearrange the order of the notes in the chord you're playing, are you still playing the same chord? To cut straight to the chase on this, yes, you are. These types of chords are known as inversions. An inversion is a chord or harmony that changes the placement or position of the notes together. It is still the same chord, but the notes within are now arranged in a different order. A triad doesn't have to start on the first degree for it to still be that chord. To illustrate what exactly an inversion means, take a look at this. If we take the notes of a normal C major triad, C, E, G, and play the first degree last, we have an inversion. This is known as C major first inversion, often labeled as C slash E on chord sheets. But if we wanted to, we could keep going. What if we wanted to play the G first in the chord instead? This is known as C major second inversion often labeled as C slash G on chord sheets. I plan on giving them their more detailed videos as well, but to sum up for now, inversions can be incredibly helpful with offering very subtle changes and even smoother movement between the different chords being played. So we talked about quite a bit today, and if you have to watch this video more than once to really soak the info in, I totally get it. Watch this as many times as you need to, it's not going anywhere. But as we wrap up today, here are just some final thoughts to keep in mind going forward. All in all, there is a lot to learn and explore with chords, and we have only scratched the surface today. There is still plenty to talk about, but I don't want to overwhelm you and I don't want this video to be three hours long. Just for now, start with playing the basic triads of major and minor chords. Play them one note at a time, and then together, and then try experimenting with different voicings and inversions. Have fun with these and play around to your heart's content. But one thing I want you to keep in mind is please go slow. There is no hurry here. You can go at your own pace and that is truly the beauty of this. If all of this stuff clicks with you after the first watch through, great, awesome. If you need to watch it five times or whatever, that is totally okay. I would much rather you learn all of this stuff accurately than quickly. Do yourself a favor and take all of the time you need with this. And while you're at it, don't forget the gift I mentioned at the beginning of this video. You can still pick up the 30 minute music basics guide and it has everything that we talked about today and then some. It's a great pocket guide to have that has all sorts of terms and understandings that are really, really helpful when it comes to getting started in the world of music. All you have to do is just go to threestringsmusic.com slash basics to download it. Again, that's the number three, stringsmusic.com slash basics. Thank you very much for your time today. I hope I got you excited with understanding how chords can work together. Try them out for yourself and let us know how it goes down in the comments. Until next time, take care of yourself, stay safe, and have a wonderful day.